Hey guys, uh, Don here. Welcome to Podiatry Practice Mastery. Um, I want to go over uh, a little bit about our numbers. Um, I think it's always good to, to kind of look at numbers. And uh, I'm trying to help you get your practice to the $1 million mark. Um, we've been using Athena since it looks like 2015. Uh, and I'm I'm looking at, we started in June 2015. We have the numbers all collected. So um, I was looking at it, kind of wondering how in the world can I continue to increase and uh, what, what's really needed. And I think in, in terms of, there are certain things that we can do um, in the practice, right? Like um, you can add more patients, but it gets to a point where you're, you're seeing so many patients. If you add more, you're going to really burnt out. You can try to reduce cancellations. Um, you can do a couple of other things. So what I'm going to first do in this, in this, um, in this episode, I'm going to talk about my numbers in the past. And then I, I put together a few things I'm going to try to do to increase my per visit value. And so I'm going to talk about that. So when I'm looking at my numbers um, from uh, 2015, my average um, collection per patient was about $90 to $100. So there's a lot of them under $100. When I go into 2016, there's also a lot of them, most of them, there was none over $100 per, per claim per patient. Okay. Um, they were all under $100. Then going into 2017, I had three months that were over 100 in 2017, and the other ones were under 100. Um, and then going into 2018, I had it looks like four, like half the year, actually seven of the months were over 100. So I'm just I'm just getting just tweaking over 100. Okay, that's in 2018. Um, and then going into 2019, I had um, I think eight, one, two, three, four. I think eight of the months. We're just tweaking over the 100 mark. Uh, that's 2019. Uh, 2020, all of the months were over 100, just over 100, 106, 112, 115, 123, uh, things like that. Uh, and then <clears throat> into 2001, I were every single month was over 100 per, per patient. And there, the highest was um, 133, actually 137. Uh, and then kind of going up from there, they're in the 130s. Uh, 2022, um, they they went down a little bit. I think that's when we added another doctor. Um, but I'm I'm in I'm in the hundreds. There's a couple couple of the months under 100, and uh, and I was doing a lot more. Um, I think I was probably doing. I don't know if I was what I was doing. They're probably just seeing a lot of patients and just rushing. And then 2023, where I'm at right now. It, it had a significant jump from 2022 to 2023. So uh, let me give you my months in 2022. 107, 109, 109, 109, 125, 118, 96, 96, 113, 121, 123, and then 140. Those are 20, 2022. Now, 2023, which is my, my best year yet, or over a million, is I was at 140, uh, 123, 135, 121, 143, 160, 164, 145, 165, 109, 144. So um, what I'm what I'm noticing uh, as I'm looking at really my production is due to the increased collection or per visit value. So that's the the if I can focus on one thing, it's it's increasing the per visit value and reduce reducing the low visit value patients. And like just as a goal, I don't know if I'll be able to get there, but my my kind of my aim is like, oh, how can I get to two hundred dollars per patient in a month? Okay, so I'm going to go over kind of what my plan is <clears throat> for getting there. So let's uh, let's go into that. Um, I was writing some things down. So my goal is how to increase my per visit value, which is measuring with the same system, up to two hundred. So number one, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to reduce my level two visits. So level two. Uh, I consider a level two a simple follow-up. So for example, after I do an IND and they follow up, that's a level two. So what I'm what I'm doing is I'm not having my paranikias follow up. They're not, they're not, they're not following up. And I have a, a message where they can text me and I have uh, some resources that I send them about what they should look for. But for most of my patients, I don't have them follow up for, for level twos. What my colleague does is he has them follow up in in three to six months. And at that time, at the follow-up, he does a matrixectomy. He's like, pretty much, you can look at the toenail. You can see if it's going to be a problem. It's chronically been a problem. We're going to see you in, in three months, and we're going to do the matrixectomy. Okay, that's what he does. So reducing level two visits, um, how am I going to do that? Also, another thing to reduce level two is for matrixes, I used to do a two-week and a four-week follow-up. 
but they were level twos. And so now what I'm doing is one three week matrix follow up. So in between, so kind of doing split and difference. Now this is all different. This is if you're if you're still kind of starting out and you need to do office visits, it's going to be different for you. You know you're going to see them as, as often as they'll see you, uh, just to 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 get your numbers up. But if you're kind of in a more of a mature practice where you're busy, you're going to try to reduce those level twos. And the last thing is for for fracture code. So when you do a fracture code. You can do an office visit in the fracture code, but you're not able to do follow-up um, office visits. You can get the x-rays, but you're not going to get the office visits. So what I'll do is I'll try to reduce the, the fracture follow-ups. I know some people, you know, they'll always have them come back and get x-rays like every two weeks and evaluate them. I find that the x-rays don't really reimburse enough or don't get me up to that 200 level or above that 200 level. So um, that's another thing to get reduced le level two. Um, an idea in passing as I was thinking about this, I do have a, a Remy laser that I like to use more. I'm not currently using, I use more shockwave, but I was thinking, well, it's in my Westboro office. I have the laser. I, I thought of, well, what I can offer patients is I can say, well, I can do combo. So radial and focused shockwave, we do 250 a session. And then I can add on the, the Remy, which is like a pain laser and add it up to 300. So make it from 250 to 300 for those sessions. So that was a, the thought for me is how can I like do a combination with the laser? Cause I don't think the laser is really, in my opinion, it's not really worth my time for me to do it. Potentially using staff. I just don't have staff right now to do that, but um, that's the benefit of the MLS, but we don't have the MLS. Um, we have in and, and MLS is a lot more expensive. So we have the Remy. So I thought, well, I can add it on to something that I'm already doing. So doing an add on for that for pain. Uh, adding it onto the shockwave, it seems like the, the wisest way to do that, not as a standalone. Because standalone, you're looking at you know five to six treatments or something like that, and 50 bucks is just not worth the time. Um, the other thing I'm, I'm doing is I am uh, reducing my routine care. So I used to see, uh, to, to do be the most efficient for routine care, I was seeing routine um, every Friday. Okay, I was doing double booked appointments. So every, every 10 minutes and... Um, and then I think on the hour, I don't know if things were triple booking, but I think it was just double booking, double booking every every 10 minutes. And I was doing that just one day a week. So I wasn't doing it any other days. And I did that to be more efficient. So I was doing the um, routine care. I was doing, let's say, a CDFE uh, once a year. And then the patients were also getting pad net. So it was producing okay. Uh, but if I want to get the level up, um, I want to reduce the amount that I'm doing of routine. So we've reduced it to a half day now instead of one day. So we, each each of the doctors have a, a half day, um, a half day, half day. And then I think there's one other doctor that is one day or just intersperses them. So that's how we're doing it uh, in order to get to that 200 level uh, mark. Um, another thing I did on the, on, on the website, I'm, I'm working on a new website. If, if you want to see it, you can take a look. It's drpelto.com. It'll eventually, I'm going to transfer over the centralmasspodiatry.com over there. But what I've done is I've gotten rid of anything that is low value. So for me, uh, we don't really like doing nail fungus. We don't. We do a lot of it, not out of um, wanting to. Um, I don't really believe laser, so I don't do much laser. My patients are still getting Lamisil. The way I've, I've thought of to make it most efficient is I see them, I do a nail sample, not a biopsy, right? Nail sample, um, and then. When I see them in two weeks, I'll give them the LFTs and the and the medication so I can get a level four. And then I see the back in three months. Um, I'm trying to figure out a way of not having come back. I've, I've tried different things where they send me a, a picture of their nail and I just give them the other refill um, just to reduce those because those are, unless I'm giving me another medication, it's kind of a lower level visit and it's not something that we really enjoy. So in the new website, I've actually not put... Um, I've not put fungus on the website. I do have ingrown toenails, but I don't have anything with fungus because once again, it's not something that we really enjoy. We want to cater to, I don't have anything about diabetes on there either. Okay. Uh, just because that is not like a, a profit center. The profit center for us is like shockwave, sports medicine, uh, things like that. Uh, and then the last thing I want to talk about is um, increasing orthotics. So um, increasing orthotics, I would love to know ways of increasing even more of them, but I, I think um, but what's worked for me the best is really tracking. So I have a, a, a tracking tool that I fill out every day when I'm with patients. It kind of keeps my eyes on the prize of, of what I'm seeing, what treatments, how many orthotics I'm doing, and then just, just plain asking patients if they want them. Cause I think they do benefit patients. A lot of times we're not really good at 
at offering them. The best thing that I found for orthotics is I say, I say this, I say, you know, certainly I determine the need for it. And I kind of explain the rationale to offload an area or reduce heel aversion or forefoot abduction or something else. But I say, my patients usually have three questions about orthotics. They ask, um, how much, um, how long do they last? I usually say they last five years or longer. Um, and I say, um, and they ask, uh, how long do they take to make? They take about four weeks to make. And then the third thing is they ask, well, how come insurance doesn't cover it? And I say, well, this is one of the things they don't in, in cover, but it's something that you need. Okay. And so we can, we can scan you for them today. And then I, then I scan the patient. So with that, those three questions, it kind of goes over their main objections that they have. Their objection is like, how long are they going to last? Their objection is, um, how long do they take to make? And then, um, also, uh, why insurance doesn't cover it. So I'm addressing that before they ask me, or they have it as a hidden question that they're not asking. Uh, and it's a reason why they don't do the orthotics. And then we scan them, but we don't order them until they pay, they make payment. So in Massachusetts, it might be a little bit different from where you're at. Like here, orthotics are not covered. They can use their flex spending, but usually orthotics aren't covered. So anyway, those are my my thoughts about this um, increasing my per visit value to $200 per patient. Um, what do my other colleagues do, you might ask? Well, I have two other partners, um, Dr. Feldman and Dr. Saviot. And so when we're looking at the numbers of 2023, um, Dr. Feldman, no one's got up to the 200 mark, but Feldman, his, his biggest was uh, 168 per patient. Um, and so that was his biggest. My biggest was 160, but he had more 160 months. And the reason is because he's he does a lot more orthotics. My other colleague went up into the 180s and 170s, Dr. Saviet, but um, he is more surgical and sees many much fewer patients. So he's seeing fewer patients, uh, which he's upset about because <laughs> he has the surgical time, but his per visit value is up more because of the surgical procedures. But no one's into 200s and his production is um, less than than our production by by quite a bit of a, of a margin this year. So anyway, those are the thoughts. I'd like to know your, your feedback. Um, if you have any questions, uh, uh, message me uh, down at podiatrypracticemastery.com. Uh, one thing I'd like to invite you, if you're listening to these, uh, I put together on uh, podiatrypracticemastery.com, there's something called uh, a practice audit. It's something that I'm doing. I'd, I'd love what I'd like you to do. And I'm trying to figure out a way of helping more people without taking up anyone's time, neither my time or your time. Practice audit, you fill things out. I'll look at it and I'll do either a podcast, you know, not saying your name, of course, and explaining what you're doing and how to improve things. Uh, or we can get on the phone if you want to, to do a, uh, a strategy call with me. But the problem is at limited time, I have like three half hours in the middle of the day. So it doesn't work for most people unless they're in the East coast. But if you want to go to that, go to, um, but I slash audit and you can see it there. Okay. Thanks guys.